firstly, thank you very much for uh, coming along to uh, this event this evening. Uh, before I uh, officially welcome you all, can I just highlight the ballot box here? For those of you who have not yet voted, counting has already started, and it is imperative that you get your votes in now. So that I'm doing a bit of knocking up here, really. Uh, my name's Stephen Metcalf. I am the Member of Parliament for South Basildon and East Sturrock. Not that that should worry you too much, but I'm also a member of the Science and Technology Committee here in the House of Commons. Uh, and although I'm not a scientist by uh, profession or by background, I did try to be, but at the time I wanted to do a science back in the early 80s, the selection of A-levels that I'd chosen, I knew where I was going with them, my college sixth form didn't, and so I ended up doing a, a different range of subjects, which has probably led, led me to being here rather than to being on that side of the jump. Uh, so I describe myself as a frustrated scientist, but what I am is a great supporter of science and a great, I hope, advocate of science and its importance here in Parliament. Not only science in its own right, but science as, has a very important role to play, not only for the people we represent as parliamentarians, but for the country as a whole, and I think for its financial and economic future. And particularly biology, I think, has a very important role to play in that, which is why I was particularly pleased to have been invited to co-sponsor this evening's event. Uh, this is to inaugurate and to launch the UK's first biology week, first ever biology week. Uh, and it's the first such event. And like much of the support for science here in Parliament, it is done on a tripartite basis. All the major parties are great, I hope, supporters of science and recognise the importance that it plays. Um, the society itself, uh, I have to say, I have given specific instructions uh, to my staff uh, and to my PA that if anything comes through from the Society of Biology, it is to get straight to the top of the pile. <laughs> now, of course, I would say that, wouldn't I, in front of a group of biologists? Uh, but there is a good reason for that. He is standing here to my right. Uh, I would never hear the last of it if I didn't respond. But I also think it is vitally important. I think the work that Society has done in its three years since its, uh, since its rebirth, I, I think is incredible. Um, there are 90 different societies, I think, now under the umbrella uh, of the society. It has organised some very, very exciting and interesting events over the last parliamentary year. I was fortunate enough to take part in another uh, first, which was the Voice of the Future, which took place back in March where uh, we on the Science and Technology Committee, instead of sitting at our horseshoe and asking questions and probing answers, uh, we were probed and questioned by a group of young scientists. And I think it, most of us were pretty terrified by this experience, not knowing where the questions were going to come from and what, uh, what answers we might be able to come up with in the allotted time. And again, that was a, a fantastic first. But there's also been the Parliamentary Links Day and, and various other events. Um, now, I think for a society that is only three years old, you have achieved an incredible amount. And I have to say, here and now, I want to see the society go from strength to strength, and I want to pledge my support to do all I can to promote biology and other sciences here in Parliament. Now, Stephen gave me some notes just before uh, I was going to do this uh, brief introduction. And at this point, I was going to make some, I was going to pass over to the chairman of the committee, Andrew Miller. And uh, Stephen had given me something about uh, the society not doing bad for a youngster. And I was going to make some smart-ass remark about passing over from a hopefully a youngster to the chairman of the committee. But that isn't going to be the case, because at this point I would like to uh, invite another colleague of mine, uh, Dr. Julian Puppet, to say a few words. So from one youngster to another. Thank you very much. It's good to have you as one of the three of us organising these, so if you're going to speak that well again, we'll have to talk about it more carefully. Um, I'm here, um, I guess, because until I, I fell in with a bad crowd and became a politician, uh, I used to be a scientist. Um, I'll, I'll get in some trouble here. I, I was talking to general microbiologists earlier, and I was never prepared to work on anything that was bigger than a, a few uh, bases of DNA. So, you know, microbiology is far, far too big for me, and this sort of animal is, is very worrying. Um, but, it's, but it's really good to, to be here. And, 
Um, this is indeed very much a tripartite event. We do manage to get all the parties to work together. There are a few core areas of difference when it comes to policy about these things which really do matter. And I'm still very disappointed this is the first part of the post ballot paper. <laughs> 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 um, you know, that is the key difference, I think, with this, uh, with this event. We'll, we'll make sure to change it next. We'll have a referendum at the next one of these. And hopefully, we'll get there. Um, but generally, we do manage to work together because I, I think it is true that all the parties do try to do things uh, in the right way for science. I think. Um, it would be certainly true to say there are people in all parties who try to do the right things for science. I think it would be a struggle to say that every party has everybody uniformly being scientifically sensible. Um, but I think there is a lot more that we can do to push government uh, to do some of this. Um, I recently uh, published a paper for the, for the Lib Dems on uh, policy for science. It's at timeurl slash scipol if you want to have a look at it. I'm not going to go through all the details of it, but it talks about money and tries uh, to set a vision for a 15-year uh, funding deal where there would be a 3% above inflation increase for those 15 years. It also talks about immigration issues and how hard it can be to get visas for um, either researchers, uh, people in industry or students, and how to use science to have uh, evidence-informed uh, policy issues. Um, my hope in that isn't to say the Lib Dems are fantastic, uh, though I hope you might take that away, particularly those of you who are my constituents, seeing a few of you here. Um, but because I would quite like to see all the parties saying exactly the same thing. Uh, you can say that means the house in the journal, we can all go home for the evening rather than anything else. Um, but I think there really is a commitment from some of us. And one thing I would say is if you have, as your member of parliament, somebody who doesn't yet take science seriously, go and talk to them and persuade them as to why it really matters, uh, both because it's interesting and fun, but also because it's this country's economic future. Um, there's been a lot said about how wonderful the society is. I just briefly want to say thank you both to, to Mark and Stephen for everything that they do uh, to make it so and to all of you. Um, and then to hand over to the chair of the, the Select Committee, among many other titles, uh, Andrew Miller. Well, you heard from the Coalition, and this is, <laughs> this is one of the unusual occasions when the Coalition are agreeing with each other. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I don't want that to continue for too long myself, but on the issue of science, on the issue of science I most certainly do, because I think one of the important uh, things that we've been able to achieve here is a, a, a collegiate approach around uh, the science agenda and we need to push very hard on it. I, I, I've read Julian's uh, paper, he'd be pleased to know, uh, he didn't convince me to join his party, but uh, 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 it, it's, it, it's I think a, an extremely good stab at, at setting out where uh, the science agenda needs to go uh, in this place because if we don't have a long-term vision around uh, the, the brilliant science in this country, uh, we will miss massive, massive opportunities. So I do hope that, uh, that the work that Julian put in is actually uh, listened to by uh, the, uh, his coalition partners and indeed by the official opposition as well. Uh, th 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 there is an opportunity here to push very hard. We're coming up to the, the next um, funding round and it is vitally important that we get the message across to uh, everyone in this building about the importance uh, of sciences and I think the government have now got it in terms of the importance of life sciences um, um, and we now need to d develop on the issue of scale and the long-term vision that is, is clearly needed and I think if we can get those issues right uh, we have a, uh, an opportunity to drive forward an important agenda uh, uh, that, in an area where Britain has uh, innate strengths. Uh, as I can see looking around the room a number of people that uh, I, I recognise who are leading some very significant pieces of work uh, in the country uh, as, uh, and it, it's great to see you here. And I, I concur with the view that's already been expressed that it's vital that you as, uh, as scientists get out uh, and knock on the door of your members of parliament and your local councillors and make sure that they understand the importance of the work that you are doing. We're doing a lot of work here. In fact, I've just asked uh, Lord o Oxborough, Ron Oxborough, to um, do some work that's just about to be published uh, on, on how uh, Parliament does science, um, but there's a, the other side of that equation is how 
you as the science community reach into the political process and uh, there are lots of very very good schemes like the Royal Society pairing scheme and so on but actually on a day-to-day -day basis it's vitally important that you get out and knock on the door of your member of parliament and make sure that he or she understands uh, what, what you're doing, the relevance of it to um, the, the, the planet on, on which we live. I also want to concur with my colleagues about the, the work that is being done by uh, the Society of Biology. Um, the, the energy that Stephen uh, Ben brings is, is renowned. Even the uh, uh, Mr. Speaker uh, says yes to him on a, a more regular basis than he ever says to me. Uh, but, uh, uh, so uh, his, his energy is, is uh, really welcomed in this debate. And Mark uh, and, and your team, uh, you're, you're doing a fantastic job uh, at, at delivering this strong message for, for uh, a, a better science base and, get, and in helping to educate the, uh, our parliamentary colleagues. So well done for everything you're doing. Um, in terms of the votes, um, uh, this could be interesting. Um, uh, I am not sure if uh, anyone has any... Um, side bets running on this, but uh, uh, I, I'm looking forward to the result of this vote. Um, I'm not going to pose um, with this, uh, not, not you, Stephen, but this. <laughs> he normally says not for me. Uh, because there, there is already circulating a photograph of me kissing this uh, 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 chap. Not Stephen, that's the. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, well done to uh, Society of Biology for putting on this event. Um, thank you all for coming. Please take home that message about the importance of knocking on the door of your MP and helping them understand uh, the importance of the work you're doing and enjoy the evening. And it's my great pleasure to hand over to Martha Downs, Chief Executive of the Society of Biology. Thank you very much, Andrew, and uh, it's a great pleasure to be here and to see so many people come to celebrate a Biology Week. Uh, the first thing I wanted to do is to thank very much um, our sponsors for this evening. So, on the parliamentarian side, Andrew Miller, Stephen Metcalf, and Gillian Hubbard, without that cross party support, we, we couldn't have these sorts of events, and we really do appreciate your involvement and support for that. So, thank you very much. The other thing I'd like to do is thank the other type of sponsor, which involves that nasty thing called cash, which comes in quite handy from time to time. Uh, and we would very much like to thank the BDSRC uh, this evening for their sponsorship of the event. Um, and again, without them, I don't think this sort of thing would be possible, so thank you very much. Um, biology and Biology Week uh, is, is a great idea, I think, and I hope that you'll all enjoy it and that the years to come will grow bigger and better and there'll be more and more events. And the great thing about biology is it has fantastic history, and perhaps the most important part of the history of biology uh, goes back to the Egyptians when actually that nasty thing called alcohol was discovered. Uh, and I think we're all here tonight hoping to enjoy a glass of wine and probably enjoy one already as a result of that early biotechnology invention. And, and since that point, I think biology has gone from strength to strength. <laughs> and in a modern economy uh, and modern society, life sciences play an incredibly important role. Um, and if we look in terms of if employment across the European Union, 22 million jobs are based on the bioeconomy, generates 1.5 trillion euros, uh, and that is an enormous amount of activity. Um, the UK on the life sciences does incredibly well. We punch well above our weight compared to international competitors, second only to the United States in terms of the quality and size of our research output. Um, and I think we should probably all congratulate uh, Sir John Burton on his recent Nobel Award, and fantastic to see another life scientist uh, being rewarded in that, in that way. And Nobel laureates um, are abundant in the UK compared to many other countries, and that again is a reflection of our enormous strength in the research base. And that's not just in the academic sector, we have uh, a very long tradition of uh, doing some fantastic research in the private sector as well, and we should never forget that actually the two go hand in hand. Um, but of course, although life sciences are important, and I would say that, wouldn't I, um, we can't forget the fact that biology operates in collaboration with all the sciences, whether it's chemistry, physics, engineering, technology, mathematics, it's all part of a big whole, which is really incredibly important. And if you look at uh, just economic activity, all those bits of science come together to create 30% of GDP in the UK. It is phenomenally important. 
Uh, and some of the independent work done by people like John Haskell and Peter College show that you know, for every pound invested in medical research, there's a 30% return on investment year on year. You know, and if you're wanting to do that family something good, you know, that's probably a good place to put it. I guess the difficult part is knowing which are going to be the successful parts and which are not. Uh, well, I don't think we can predict that any better than anybody else. So we've decided to have Biology Week because we want to celebrate biology, we want to actually to try and engage the public in the life sciences, explain them what it's about, uh, and try to encourage them to get involved. Uh, there are over 40 events happening around the country, and this is one tonight. We've had a debate on Save the Panda, and you're going to hear the result of the ballot later on. Uh, we had our Photography Awards and Science Communications Award last night, and you can see the fantastic photographs around the wall here later on if you haven't seen them already. Um, and uh, throughout the week, there are a number of events, not just here, but also organised through our branches um, and through individual members um, across the country. And the Sunlight Neurology has two really important parts of membership. One is member organisations, and Andrew, I think you already mentioned that. We have actually over 70 other learning societies in the membership who we represent on core policy issues, science, policy, education, public engagement, those sorts of things, where all the sciences come together. Um, and that is enormous breadth. And the same is true of our membership, where we have <coughs> school children, we have Nobel laureates, we have people like academia, people in the private sector. And if you have an interest in biology, you know, do think about coming and joining the society, because it's not just about a specialist area, it's about trying to be all-encompassing, a very broad church to include everyone, so I'd encourage you to do that. Um, and one of the things that we've spent a lot of time trying to do in our first three years is provide more benefit for members and a more public benefit for everybody. And one of the ways we try to do that is through the professional development, uh, continued professional development and our professional registers program um, and a whole range of other activities. And one of those in particular I'd like to highlight tonight and to celebrate um, because under a pilot license from the Science Council, um, we've uh, been very fortunate to take forward both the registered science technician program and the registered science scientist program. Recognising the valuable contribution professionally people at all levels make uh, in the science uh, arena. Uh, and tonight uh, we have with us four of our first uh, people who have managed to become um, uh, uh, accredited through that process. Um, and I'd like to invite them individually to come up and receive their certificate. And I hope you'll join me in <coughs> congratulating them on the fantastic success. But first of all, can we invite our Patricia Kingston from Hope Park Valley, please. Uh, next we have Louise Appleby from the Institute of Naval Medicine. Uh, next we have Joanna McElrath from LifeScan in Scotland. And then finally, but the no, no least, Rebecca Phillips, also from Life Scan. <laughs> Steve was very, very keen on photography. <laughs> 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 uh, we're going to have one group picture with uh, Stephen and Andrew. Come on, to be there. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to come down a bit. Oh, we'll come down. Yeah. <laughs> Join, join the group. Come, come through, because otherwise you'll just be a tiny head in the background. Before we conclude the, uh, the formal part of the proceedings, we have, we have one final part uh, where uh, we're looking with uh, uh, some interest at a very particular piece of biological research and techniques around DNA analysis and the benefit that can bring. Uh, and I'm delighted to see that we have Chris Packham here with us uh, this evening. Um, Chris is going to say a few words about um, a piece of work that he's been doing with the BBSRC uh, over the last couple of weeks. But before we do that, we've got a very, very short video to show you. It's three minutes and 40 seconds long, uh, so it won't keep you standing for too long. I hope you'll enjoy it, and then I'll hand over to Chris to say a few words. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm lucky enough to work as a broadcaster for the BBC. I did do the right A-levels. In fact, I did the right degree, but I still turn my back on science. And even more of a traitor than going into politics working in television. <laughs> but I do what I can to try and engage people with science, which is still a great passion. 
and through that interactive uh, opportunity, I, I, I tried to make some progress there. I, I was prompted recently to say to one of my colleagues that I was living the Star Trek of my youth. I'm sure there are a few people here who remember those Sunday evenings when Kirk was talking to Spock on one of these. <laughs> I haven't got Spock's number. If anyone else has, I'd be very grateful. I'd get more logic out of him than I would some of my colleagues on this thing. Um, but of course, it's not about that type of technology that we're interested in tonight. We're interested in the, the biotechnology. When I, back in those days of Star Trek, was getting to grips with genetics, it was all about an antiquated monk, Gregor Menrul, and his peas. They still have relevance, of course. I then grew up through a time when we did sequence that first human genome, but it was a project that took many years, huge amounts of cooperation all around the planet. And yet now, here am I, sat in my garden, only a few more years later, when advances in various technologies, computer processing certainly being one of them, allow us to, within the space of two weeks, identify all of those organisms in those soil samples. Now, we actually managed to take, let's call them, Subsamples, two billion subsamples in that two and a half week period. And we identified 400 different genera of bacteria. We haven't quite got them all to species level yet, but as you heard in the film, two of the most important groups were the most popular. Those of which are associated with plant roots are primarily there to fix nitrogen. And as most of you know, nitrogen is an incredibly common element, but it's very difficult to get your hands on it to fix it. And we are eminently reliant upon these bacteria to put it into the plants, which we like to consume and it works its way up. We are made of this material. The other group were those which are responsible for the decomposition of organic material, that's carbon. So they're essential in the carbon <coughs> side, but we know we're all made of that too. So, these organisms, which are so inaccessible to so many people, and for so long were inaccessible to science, culturing them proved so difficult. We couldn't do what we've done in two and a half weeks, in many, many months. We couldn't grow these animals and identify them as individuals. But metagenomics, this sampling of a super soil, using current technology to come up with a far better understanding of the microbial content of, of, of this <coughs> soil, it, it is a phenomenon. Now, it took two and a half weeks, in a few months' time, it's going to take just 24 hours. And in the film now, I alluded to the fact that this will be of tremendous value to agriculture, but it's not just agriculture. It will be biotechnology. It will be biofuels uh, as well. Now, harking back to that agriculture, we know that we face tremendous challenges in the years that are ahead. Our human population is still growing. Uh, the resources are not getting any bigger. The planet's staying the same size. We are going to need to optimise our ability to use this planet amongst other strategies that we'll need to employ. And one of those is to better understand how to use the science that we have. So I think it's very fitting, this, this, these extraordinary advances in this one very particular field of science are used to herald the very first Biology Week. It was something that was beyond many of our dreams when we first signed up to do our A-level biology and got into Gregor Mendel. And now we have the privilege of standing here through a tremendous amount of hard work and advancement and hopefully we'll be standing here at some stage in the future when the applied aspects of this will be employed to the greater benefit of us and I have to say all of the other creatures <coughs> in that ecosystem including my beloved tawny owls and foxes. So, long live Biology Week. <laughs> Can we have the candidates up here, please? <laughs> yeah, without the glasses. <laughs> Go on. I've um, seen some of them. I've had a chance to do any canvassing, so. I have. Just have the two people in a row, and Stephen. Now. Ah. We'll have the photographs before the result, then the candidates all look happy. <laughs> Thank you
problems everyone in, I'm going to have to crunch right in. Squeeze in. Why don't you turn it to me? Turn that Okay, all looking to me if you would. And we'll do this in one. <laughs> Thank you very much. One more. Straight to me. Lovely. Thank you very much. Sit down. Sit down. Now, before I. Just, just before I declare myself, where are we going to. Where are we going to. Things that tied a lot of science messages together and Mark referred to the importance of the. Uh, of, of, of the other disciplines uh, that, that tie all uh, of, of modern science together and uh, one discipline can't get on without the other and then uh, Chris in his presentation referred to the importance of uh, the, the world of uh, computer science uh, um, which is why my select committee I'm pleased to say um, when we decided to give a name to the proposed innovation centres uh, decided that they ought to be called the Alan Turing centres on the basis that you couldn't find a, a British scientist who had had such a profound impact upon every discipline uh, that's represented here in this room. Sadly, somebody in Biz decided to call them catapults, but that's uh, something we'll get on to another time. Now, formally, um, I, the returning officer, <laughs> being uh, for the constituency of Charles Darwin House West End Central, <laughs> do hereby declare that the number of votes cast were as follows. Bella Landa Chame Chameleon Party, 36,000 votes. <laughs> Our own Cyclic Party, 8,000 votes. <laughs> Abisca Delphus Party, 33,000 votes. The Giant Panda Party, 39,000 votes. The Dark Guest Order, order, oh, I have to call the police. The Dark Guest Amp Party, 20,000 votes. <laughs> the Spoon Build Sandpiper Party, 39,000 votes. So, I regret to say that Julian was right. <laughs> we did we in some way have a, a, a playoff here. <laughs> so, um, we have joint winners of the Giant Panda Party and the Spoon build sandpiper party, each obtaining 39,000 votes. Can I congratulate the winners and can I thank for the participants? Representatives, uh, uh, candidates, and agents. I hope. Uh, uh, well, the candidates might be a bit difficult. Giant <laughs> panda in here, um, and the spoonbill sandpiper. But can we have their agents in, in front of me, please? Now, the convention in British politics is when there is a tie vote, you have to toss a coin. <laughs> now, I've been some very tight elections, but so. Uh, this was not Reeves, let me say it. <laughs> this is, uh, so, um, uh, we're going to have it here. Uh, uh, who's going to call? The Sandpiper Party is going to call. Tails. Of course it would be Tails from the Sandpiper Party. <laughs> and it's Heads. A giant panda.